Hi, this is just a little demo to show some of the principles of diverting surplus power. Uh, this is one of my own printed circuit boards, but it's got the familiar Atmel 328p processor on there, same as in an Emon TX or an Arduino Uno. We have um, a voltage uh, sensor, which is powered from the transformer, which is on the board here. Um, we have a current sensor, which is clipped around a wire that's going through an output stage, one of my own output stages, connected by this wire here and driven from one of the I.O. pins. Uh, also on this board, because it's a, a demo board of mine, um, it's got some extra features. This is a display with some extra logic, um, which allows the uh, state of the energy bucket to be displayed. I've also got the ability here to change the levels of the thresholds for the uh, when we were operating in anti-flicker mode. And I've also got a switch which is connected to this blue LED which allows me to simulate power, simulate um, surplus power. And I've got a yellow LED there which uh, says whether I've got any surplus power by going on if the energy state uh, after one main cycle is bigger than it was on the previous main cycle. So that's essentially how it works. Nothing's happening now because um, there's no real power flowing and we're not simulating any. So if I switch the little switch here, we will activate, um, we will bring online 375 watts of simulated surplus power. So here we go. Flick the switch. The blue lights come on to say the facility is active. Um, the energy bucket is filling up and when it gets up to the top, the yellow light goes out because we're now sitting at the maximum, which is 3,600 joules. And every time, every main cycle, we're sitting firmly at 3,600. So it's never bigger than it was on the previous main cycle, which is why the um, yellow light has now gone off. So if this was real sunlight generating our um, surplus power, we would be losing this power to the grid. And that's what um, a surplus power diverter is designed to stop. So if I switch on a load, this is a 750 watt heater, which is twice the uh, rate at which we're generating. We'd expect the energy level to come down, which it does. And when it gets down to a certain point, um, the load should go off and we'll then start charging. So we get our surplus power again and then it goes off. So we're now, we're now ramping up and down between two levels and these levels are occupying 20% of the energy bucket. So this is operating in anti-flicker mode over 20% of the available range if you have a conventional meter. Some meters have less available range, so you have to tweak the um, anti-flicker thresholds to suit a particular meter. Now if I were to um, change the threshold levels so that instead of occupying 20%, we are occupying 0%. So if I bring these down a couple of notches, we're now operating in what I call normal mode. So the rapid flashing is because as soon as the energy state goes above the halfway point, the load goes on, which brings it down. And as soon as it go, but goes below the halfway point, the load goes off. So we're flashing on and off at something like two main cycles on, two main cycles off. And this would look a bit unpleasant if you had a filament light because the light will be flicking you know, just a little bit and it will be annoying. So anti-flicker mode is a much better way to operate uh, if you can do. But the problem is you have to have a calibrated system and you don't necessarily know where the thresholds can be set. It's fine if you have a standard meter, but some meters are more uh, tricky than others. Now if I switch the simulated power off, so we're not synthesizing any more surplus power. The system goes back to more or less as it was before. We've got a half full energy bucket. We're not simulating anything and there's no surplus power. What's happening now is that every main cycle is being analyzed. Um, but essentially, because we have such a quiet system, every main cycle's energy is exactly the same as it was beforehand. So there's never any greater than it was before. So the level is staying put. There might be the odd flick every so often when the ADC returns a slightly different level. But what I found out recently is that if you put a piece of metal, here's a metal screwdriver, just an ordinary electrician's metal screwdriver, put it somewhere near the CT and move it to and fro, then, there we go, 
So every time I move it across the CT, we're getting um, some surplus power showing. So I'm generating my own energy. What's happening, I presume, is that I'm moving the metal near a coil. That's generating some um, EMF and that's being correctly seen and deduced by the processor as being some power. It's only a small amount of power, um, but it is technically a bit of power that's being uh, generated. So an interesting uh, little bit of physics there. So um, just going back over the more practical, if I switch the um, simulated 375 um, watts on again, this is normal mode, and if I wind my um, little switch round to the situation we were before. This is setting two on my scale, so we're using two tenths of the um, available range. This is what anti flicker mode looks like. So, in terms of importing and exporting, if you had a meter that recorded them separately, uh, a meter in this mode might well record equal amounts of import and export, which might have financial uh, implications. But if you have the meter running in, sorry, if you have the Mark II system running in its normal mode, then hopefully the individual import and export periods will be so short in terms of how much energy is, is moved that it will sort of operate underneath the meter's radar and um, the situation, the meter will see this as a balanced situation exactly the same as if there was no energy flowing and nothing being diverted. So um, that's pretty well how it works. If there's any um, any feedback, any interest, uh, just drop me a line um, on the forum, and we'll try and go over um, what's what it's all about. Thanks for watching. Cheers for now.